First of all, thanks to everyone for sticking around. I know I'm going to be talking about some uh, cons constrained scheduling and optimization. So one of the constraints is to finish early so you guys can all go to the bar. So thanks again for sticking around. Um, there we go. Uh, sorry. OK, so, so I'm at Salesforce Maps. So this is a, a new entity at Salesforce. I was formerly uh, at Map Anything, which was a startup out of Charlotte, Atlanta, and Knoxville, Tennessee, where um, Salesforce, as you know, one of the, the key assets we have is an enormous amount of data about your customers. So how many people here use Salesforce? OK, so a lot of the, the issues that you've heard about today about cleaning the data and uh, sort of managing it, a lot of that is handled for you behind the scenes with Salesforce. So we don't have to get into a lot of the nitty gritty that you suffer through with a lot of the open data sets. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, one of the fundamental problems that leads into the optimization that I'll talk about is something you've heard about a couple times already today, which is the traveling salesman problem, OK? Um, and so because, so imagine you're a salesperson and you just got to New York today and you had an appointment and it was canceled and you wanted to say, well, now what should I do with all this extra time I have? Well, you may have all your data in Salesforce and you may want to know, hey, show me my accounts that Chris has today that could be visited and maybe I have a priority or a score associated with a probability of success, right? So now we have a routing problem, but now we also have the issue of who should I visit? I can't visit all 200 leads that I have, so that sort of should give you a feel for some of the optimization problems that we lead into that are classical in nature, that there's this routing component. But we also have to, as part of the decision, we have to decide who we should visit, right? And, and what is our criteria for why we should visit them? So um, let's see. There we go. So I mean, one thing that we're spoiled by is the fact that many mapping and routing uh, applications that we use in our personal lives are, one, free, and two, very good. So, we heard earlier the talk from Waze about eliminating traffic, and I don't remember how many users there are, but it's in, I think it was over 100 million users, and it, it always works, and we trust it, and even if someone else is in the car with us telling, no, you should take a left here, maybe the, the backseat driver you have says, no, Waze says you should go right, so you go right. So we have these very uh, good applications that we use for free in our personal lives, and so the question that we asked at Map Anything at Salesforce Maps is, why should my business life, why should life at the enterprise be any different? Um, so typically, the, the problem, the optimization problem we're solving as an individual is, hey, I want to get from A to B, and I want to do so quickly, and maybe I want to avoid traffic, or maybe I want to see, well, what time should I leave if I want to get there at 8 PM? So it's still an optimization problem, but it's sort of of a different scale what we encounter in the enterprise. And so this is a screenshot of a problem that one of my colleagues worked on last week for um, a trash, a trash pickup company, not delivery, obviously. Uh, <laughs> I hope not, at least. <laughs> if, um, and so they had 2,500 stops. They had four trucks. We had to do the routes over a week. We had multiple dump sites that all cost a different amount of money based on what we were dumping there and how much we were dumping. Um, the drivers want to have fair shifts, right? So if I'm a driver and you're a driver, you know, I want to see that you're working just as hard as me because we're all making the same money. So there's this sort of nebulous notion of fairness that becomes part of this optimization problem, too. Um, we're driving trucks that are heavy, so we can't go on some bridges. We can't go through some tunnels. We have traffic. We may have to pay drivers overtime. Um, and we can only fit a certain amount of trash in the truck. So we've already heard about a couple other interesting vehicle routing problems earlier today in the space of um, Haiti and they also the uh, school bus routing problem. So, these, these problems are everywhere, and this should hopefully give you a flavor for how complicated these real life problems are. Um, another optimization problem that we have, if you're an individual, like I said, my example, hey, I showed up in New York today and my meeting canceled, who else could I visit? Well, if you're the enterprise, um, I, mean, I have a much larger problem. So if I'm managing a team of salespeople, what are the things that I need to do to assign fair sales territories for them so they all have the same chance of making their commission, they make geographic sense, and things like that. Um, and so to, to give you a little flavor of how our products look and feel, there's a, a hopefully a fun video that'll take about a minute and a half that you can watch here. Without the right tools, it can take months to plan, carve, and deploy sales territories. And companies often rely on guesswork, leading to missed quotas and frustrated reps. With Salesforce Maps Territory Planning, you can make use of an advanced optimization engine that automatically balances accounts across territories. When territories are unbalanced, you can easily optimize them. 
Simply choose the account attribute that matters most to your business, such as annual revenue. Make sure the territories are logical based on actual drive time between locations. Then choose whether you want the engine to prioritize balance, continuity, or compactness. Balance results in equal distribution of annual revenue between territories. Continuity minimizes the number of account reassignments. And compactness results in the smallest possible territories. To get the most out of territory planning, you can start from scratch or take one of your existing territory models and adjust as needed. And since it's built on Salesforce, you have access to all your accounts, users, and reports. Easily select an area to reassign accounts or compare attributes with pinpoint accuracy. Control which columns are displayed to ensure that territories are equitable. And easily compare current and proposed account assignments to understand the overall balance. When you're done, you can publish as a territory model within Enterprise Territory Management or as individual shape layers within Salesforce Max and take the process of territory planning from months to hours, allowing your sellers to focus on what they do best, creating customers and closing deals. Blaze your trail with Salesforce. See, wasn't that easy? Um, so, I mean, not surprisingly, what's going on behind the scenes there is where, unbeknownst to the user, we're solving a pretty complicated optimization problem. And so, our approach to the variety of problems that we encounter is, not surprisingly, an API-first approach. So one thing that is a little bit different about a lot of the problems that we solve is that they can be very large. So not only do we have all the messy constraints that I was talking about before and that I'll get into in a little bit more, um, but one of our products, we actually plan out the, the uh, sales routes and the sales visits for a, a rep for up to 90 days at a time. So if I have 1,000 leads that were assigned to me in Salesforce, well, that all of a sudden means that I need a thousand by thousand travel time matrix to do so. So all of our routing is done over, over the street network and like I was showing you before with Waze and Google Maps and things like that, we sort of have come to assume that you're gonna account for real time traffic and predicted traffic as part of that, right? So we, after surveying the landscape of all the travel time matrices providers that are out there, for us to be able to do these things quickly enough, we actually ended up, um, the commercial data that we buy and the commercial traffic data that we buy, we actually host our own travel time matrix service that is actually available to the world just as an API. So at the end, I'll get into a little bit about how you can re request an API key from us for that. Um, and then the routing problem I'll talk a little bit more about, but you know, again, these very long planning horizons. So when you have a long planning horizon for your routing problem, it's not just who should I visit today, but well, when was the last time that I visited them? So if I have a gold account that I wanna visit, once every three weeks, well, um, then that becomes a new constraint in my optimization that even though it may be very efficient for me to visit them five times in one week, that would sort of be an absurd solution for the salesperson to keep knocking on the door day after day when they just saw them. Um, other APIs that we have, territory optimization problem, you just, just saw the video there. And I think one thing that, that is a real challenge, and I think I've seen it in a lot of the other talks, is to figure out the right way to expose what is ultimately a very complicated backend to a user that may be relatively unsophisticated and not really want to even know that they're solving a complicated optimization problem, right? And I think that that's something that we're trying to figure out how to get right, right? How much, and in the last talk too, how do, you, how do the computer and the machine work together, right? So you saw in the territory um, optimization model, we sort of you know, try to make it intuitive by letting them pick somewhere in this Venn diagram where they think their solution should live and empower them to use this optimization even though they really want to be completely agnostic of all the complexity behind the scenes. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this VRP API. There's been quite a few talks about this, and I'm happy to talk in more detail uh, afterwards if there's interest. Um, but I think what, one thing that we had at Map Anything is that we had a huge library of historical use cases that we couldn't solve, right? It wasn't like, hey, here's, a, here's an academic paper on the VRP and go solve some benchmark problems. It was, here, here's the fundamental problem, and here's all these wrinkles that we've encountered with weird use cases over the years that we now want to be able to solve. So our job when we arrived at Map Anything, tasked with creating a sort of a general purpose solver that could solve these problems, was to figure out the right way to abstract everything. So heterogeneous vehicles, I have to admit we did not have the vehicle type of a wheelbarrow as we learned today, so um, there, there's always something new to learn, but if you have trucks and cars and trucks with different weights and bikes and pedestrians, you can have them all in the same problem. And again, the, the, all the travel times that we have are created behind the scenes using a commercial map and commercial predicted traffic data. 
One thing that was interesting for us is this idea of a working shift. So a lot of times your, your shift is nine to five, but when we're planning out the routes for a sales rep over a three month period, his shift may actually be a week at a time where he may be staying in a hotel in between visits, right? So you go on Monday, then wherever you end up Monday, that's where you start Tuesday. So we have a very rich notion of what this shift looks like and the, and the, and the breaks that can fit into that. A work order for us can be anything. One of our clients is a dog walking company. We have trash companies, and then the most common use case is just the true traveling salesperson who is going around scheduling meetings. So these orders can have a duration. They can have attributes. So if, that if you have a certain skill or a certain attribute for the work order that needs to match with a vehicle or driver, you can do that. We have time windows and appointments, um, items if we need to pick up and drop off, things like that. Um, and I, I think the, the real power of, the, of what we've created and we've, what we expose directly to you in the API is the thing up here on the right with the constraints. Um, uh, there we go. So prior to our time at Map Anything, one of the problems that myself and the rest of the team worked on was really complicated sports scheduling problems. So think NBA and Major League Baseball and, company, and businesses like that where you have to schedule literally thousands of games, but it's very difficult to define what a good schedule is because if you ask, you're going to get a different answer depending on who you ask, right? If you ask an NBA coach what a good schedule looks like, he's going to say play, rest, play, rest, play, rest for the entire season. If you ask a team owner what they think a good schedule would be, it would be, well, I want to play every game at home on the weekend against the Lakers because I can sell the most tickets. Whereas if you ask the, the TV network what they want, they say, well, I want every every game by the Lakers to be televised, right? So the, the definition of good really depends on who you ask, and I think that's common to a lot of these multi-objective optimization problems. So these are just a few of the lessons that we've learned working on these problems. One lesson is that the problem that you ultimately are going to solve, you're never going to know that at first, right? So, so create an open-ended architecture or system where you can augment that over time as you learn what the real problem is, right? You're never going to know all the constraints. For example, um, in the school bus routing talk we heard earlier that the school districts didn't like the fact that some of the routes were parallel to each other. Well, that's because if a human designs the routes, they're naturally going to do this sort of spatial partitioning, and the routes are almost never going to cross each other. So the human may look at that and say, hey, that doesn't make sense to me. Why are my routes looking like that? But at the end of the day, I think you save them four vehicles, right? But that may be a constraint that you, you need to incorporate with some level of penalty into your optimization. Um, I think the other thing that we've learned over the years is even though there are very powerful you know, techniques for solving these optimization problems, mixed integer programming, the solver's getting, getting better and better, a lot of the constraints we have are complex and really nonlinear. And so while integer programming and these techniques are part of the toolbox, we really rely on very fast local search operators. That's what you see with these pictures up here. And local search just means you take an existing solution, you modify it in some way, and you hop to a new solution. And when you have these sorts of methods, then any kind of constraint, whether it's linear or nonlinear, as long as you can take a solution and evaluate it quickly, you can decide if that, you know, how quickly you can evaluate that constraint. Um, finally, the last slide before we all go to the bar, um, API keys are available. So if you just go to developer.mapanything.com and you want to try out this API, um, here's a sort of a listing of the 40 or so constraints that are available now, everything from uh, multi-dimensional balancing. So if you wanted your school bus routes to be balanced in terms of the number of students that you picked up, or if you wanted your routes to be balanced in terms of revenue or the number of stops, um, you can have uh, another constraint related to passenger pickup. We actually worked on a problem once for a company in Mexico um, delivering passengers to resorts in Cancun. And so they, of course, wanted to make sure that the journey time of the passengers was fair, right? So even though if you may be able to eliminate a vehicle or reduce mileage, if you had one family over here that was on the bus for two hours and another family was on for 30 minutes and they're sitting there watching everyone get off while they're sitting there sweating, getting ready to go to the, to the beach, that's not a good solution. So um, I think with that, I'll conclude. I doubt there'll be any questions since you're all eager to get out of here, but I appreciate you uh, sticking around for this last talk. And uh, thanks to the, the organizers for setting this up. I think it's been a very informative conference.